So when you are starting out in Clo, it can be a little bit daunting trying to create your own custom fabrics, but I'm going to show you a really easy way. Um, it's really the only way to properly make custom fabrics, but I just want to show you how easy it is. So I have this stretch, this nylon spandex that I ordered. It's supposed to be a luxury swimwear fabric, and uh, it's a ribbed nylon spandex. So there's not anything out there. There's not a preset clo fabric. There's not um, a fabric like this that's available on other fabric library sources. So I'm gonna make my own. This is what we are creating. The color might differ a little bit depending on the um, cameras and the recording process. But I'm gonna switch over to the screen now and we'll start in Photoshop. Now this is a very important step. This is going to determine how long it takes you to prepare your repeat um, and how easy it's going to be, how many steps and tools you need in Photoshop to correct it. The number one thing, or there's two things really with the fabric image that you start with that's going to be very important. One, that you have balanced lighting, and two, that you have a straight on perspective. So clearly I have some differences in value here. Up here it's a little bit shaded, down here a little bit lighter. I didn't do this with any special equipment. I did this with my iPhone. And having said that, iPhones have pretty decent cameras on them. So, I mean, you can get some really good resolution in this image more than you even need for a fabric. Um, the more PPI, and more info you have in your file for this, the bigger your file is going to end up um, in your 3D modeling and the longer it's going to take to process all this. So you want to have a, a good balance. Um, but like I was saying with the, the image, so just a straight up iPhone image will work. And if you don't have a good studio to get a balanced lighting situation, the best option is natural lighting. This was taken outside in sort of a shadow early morning. The best would be overcast so you don't have any glaring sun, um, super high highlights and low low lights type of situation. And even with this we're going to take a small sample of it and try to repeat it so we don't have any um, variation or, or a lot of variation. The other thing is I'm trying to be as straight on as possible with this. So meaning I'm not going to have a warped perspective where my ribs are a little bit wider at one side than they are at another. So try to get as straight on as possible with your perspective when you're taking this shot. Okay, to start, I want to look at this image and sort of find an area where there's not a lot of deviation in the rib like this right here. I can see it's bowing out a little bit. I don't want to grab any of that as a sample. Um, this right here looks pretty even in tone and value um, rather than taking a spot up here which would have that shadow or a little deeper value. So I'm going to try for right here. Everything looks straight. Um, so I'm going to grab this bounding box, my selection tool. And it does look a little bit darker over here. So maybe I'll take this and we'll see what happens with it. Okay, so I just want to make a little selection here and I'm going to hit Command C and Command V to copy it or just Command C for right now. And I'm going to open a new file and what I find with uh, making a fabric in Clo, so again, you don't want a huge file to uh, sort of bog down your, your processing and make your file, your end file really large what works well is a 4x4 square and 150 ppi will be fine. I'm going to paste it, so Command V. 
and that's really big obviously because our initial our original image was really big compared to this 4x4 four four square and what I'm doing right now is when you import your images into Clo, whatever you have is going to stay at 100% scale so I literally counted the ribs in this fabric and there's about 13 ribs per inch and that's what I need to scale this to so let's see how many we have there's sort of one right there but one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so we'll make this a little bit bigger and go down a little bit less to count for that half a one at the beginning so let's go about there <clears throat> And I'm just going to copy and paste this again and match up the rib as best as I can. If you want, you can sort of vary where you're connecting these pieces to offset any differences. Um, and sort of discrepancy in the way things match up and what I mean by that is I'm not connecting them in the same spot I'm not just going to the end and finding the closest area although that looks pretty good for that one <clears throat> and I'll do one more here Let's go with that. Okay, so I'm going to merge all of these now, all of these layers. I'm going to now um, copy this entire merged section. So Command C, Command V. And you can see here. There is a definite difference in value. So I don't want that. Let's delete this. And since I know from that little test that the upper area has a deeper value than the lower area, I'm going to take a little sample out of this now. Let's take this lower area in hopes that we can um, just capture a sort of more balanced area of it and exclude that darker area. Okay, so now that I have this little tiny section, let's see how that looks together. And if there's like a um, a good difference in color, I think that is pretty good actually. If you wanted to, if you wanted to blend these sort of, you could put a layer mask on this. So with that layer selected, I could go down here and click the layer mask icon right here that adds a layer mask so you if you're not familiar with layer masks they're pretty much hiding they're creating a layer that um, allows you to uh, choose what you hide or make visible so conceal and reveal white reveals black conceals and if I wanted to blend this on top of that I just want this to sort of fade away a little bit at the top I would use my gradient tool and oops opposite and you can do this as many times as needed until you get sort of a soft edge to that so that could potentially help with some like if you did it with this entire one right here add a layer mask get our gradient tool 
and then take away this dark area get my selection tool or move tool and that would give us a bigger sample to take from so let's see if that works better now there will be, um, depending on what you're using, what fabric you're trying to um, recreate, you're going to use different functions and different tools to get your perfect repeat. So a good way when you see small variation in your fabric is to use the uh, stamp tool. And I can talk about that in a second. But this is going to be the majority of your work. Is getting this fabric perfect. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to delete this right here because I know I have this original area has that darker edge up there. So I can go ahead and merge these two, this, these two new layers right here. and use this as my section that I copy and paste. Okay, we can merge all of these since to my eye right now it looks decent, but the real test is going to be when you um, check the, let's actually flatten it first when you offset it so I'm going to filter other offset and what that's going to do it's going to um, give us a sort of cross-section or intersection of our tiles and you can see right here there is a, a seam right here it's pretty obvious but that could be because we didn't yet talk about the two sides, left and right. So when um, this repeats, one, it has to be a perfect square, so a perfect ratio. But also, since we're doing this rib, which is a little bit hard to get perfect, um, this left side needs to pick up exactly where this right side leaves off. So I can see this stops in the middle of a rib, sort of towards the, the left side of a rib, but sort of in the middle. And this one is sort of going on the opposite side, going toward the right side in the middle of one of the, the actual bodies of the ribs. So I'm going to get my crop tool I'm going to right click on this and it's already in this one by one square ratio so it'll remain a perfect square when I bring it down and I just want to get to a position where it looks like it's going to pick up perfectly where this side leaves off so let's see if that does it for us go back to filter other offset and there's a tiny line right there I can still see and these slight variations like these deviations or or um, areas that don't quite match up it will become very visible in your fabric repeat in Clow. so you have to be super detailed when you're correcting this so let's try that one more time. It looks like we need just a little less here. And a good way to be get as accurate as possible is to really zoom in. Hmm. It could be right there. Let's check it. Filter other offset now can you see any 
weird areas. Can you see where it repeats? It might have a little too much taken off that time because I think this is where it repeats. And so this skinny rib compared to all the other ones, you'll be able to sort of tell when it becomes a fabric. So let's try one more time. Let's go with that and let's see. And I am making my image smaller and smaller every time I do this, but only very incrementally. So it's still at three and three quarter inches. And you, you will have to do this back and forth thing um, when you're trying to recreate a fabric from a real world fabric. And you really need to be as detailed as possible. Still just a hint too much. Let's see this really quick. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. When you have a small deviation that you want to fix, grab this rubber stamp tool. The more you can sort of mix things up in here, sort of jumble it around until it, it matches perfectly. So sort of offsetting it a bunch of times is a good idea. The rubber stamp tool though will allow you to copy any area. Let's see if we can find something we would like to fix. There's not too much on this example, but let's say we had like a, a little dark area right here. It was maybe a defect in the knit itself. I can make this smaller or bigger with my bracket keys. And if I hold option while I click on an area like this, just left click while you're holding option and it will take that little bit within the circle and then you can use that in another area um, as long as it's the correct sort of sizing and shape so you can do that otherwise the stamp tool will sort of make an educated guess it's an intuitive tool that takes the surround the information of the surrounding area and applies what it thinks you would like to have as the repeat. There could be, um, and it's, it's a little bit hard to see right here, but there is like this little area that is if you, if you sort of squint your eyes and look at it from far away, you can see this striation here where it has this dark horizontal line pattern. So we could use dodge and burn. If we want to lighten it up, let's try that first. Let's get the dodge tool. And we have an exposure of 21. Let's try that. And maybe I'll just make smaller passes. So it's more concentrated on this little sort of horizontal line of darker area. And it's sort of really hard to um, see these things while you are in the program fixing them, but they will show themselves when you actually create the fabric in Clow. So it might take a few times before you're happy with the final fabric file. So I'll continue doing this until I feel like I have a good um, sample. Okay, so let's try this um, offset again and see if we totally messed up our look. Okay, so now we have this sort of centered, darker line. Let's accept that, and I'm going to do this again. Mm, 
I'm going to take it down. Okay, at this point, I feel like it is pretty good. It's as good as I'm going to get it right now. And um, you saw how many times I would correct it a little bit and then do the offset test and keep it as offset and then make any adjustments to that, off, that new offset version and then offset it again and make those adjustments. So it's mixing it all up until you have like a pretty solid um, level across the board with your image. So in Clo, just a quick recap, to create a fabric that has visual texture and depth and color, you use maps. Um, and so this is to make your file a little bit smaller and more manageable, easier for your computer to process. And it's broken down into the visual representation, which is your texture map. And it's not texture like we use it normally as far as roughness of an of a, um, object or fabric, but texture just talks about the color and the value, like a pattern on the surface of something. So the other maps that you have, you have a normal map and a displacement map. Normal maps are going to give the surface roughness, so the undulations, the heights, and the low areas. And displacement map is going to sort of supplement that, add to the geometry of that. You can also add an opacity map to a fabric if you have a lace or a really chunky knit that has see-through areas. And that's, um, I can tell you a little bit about that once we get going. So I'm going to save this as a working copy because we're at a pretty good spot. I don't want to um, lose this. I'm just going to say um, rib fabric working. So we can always come back to this and rework it as a Photoshop file. So keep all of our info. Photoshop and Illustrator files are compatible with Clo. You can bring those right into Clo. And it's nice because you can use multiple artboards if you have like, let's say, graphics that you want to apply to your garments. Each artboard will be uploaded in that AI file and you can choose which artboard or all of them if you like. But in any case, um, we only need a PNG or a JPEG for these maps. And JPEGs are lossy files, lossy compressed files, so I always go with PNG, but that's pretty much default. I go with PNG, so I'll go to File, Export, and Export as PNG. And this is our first map, which is our texture map. So I'm going to say rib stretch texture. I want to now create two more four by fours with the same resolution. And I'm just going to select all by Command A or going up to your select menu. And I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in this first file. I'm going to paste it in this file as well. And it is a little bit smaller. Okay, so now we have two more of the same exact thing. Your normal and displacement maps, all of your maps need to come from the exact same image. Not an image that you have a different offset going on, but these ribs need to match up perfectly with your texture map. So we have saved our texture map already. We can do our normal map now. Um, in Clo, just so you know, if you apply a texture map to a fabric and you don't have a normal map created in Photoshop for this custom fabric, you can 
generate a normal map just by increasing the intensity of the normal map. If you bump it up a little bit, it will automatically generate. But I don't find that those are as detailed or they don't look as good as if you create your own in Photoshop like we're doing right now. The displacement map, the third one that we're going to do, is not fully necessary, but it does add to the dimension of your fabric. So I recommend that you have a displacement map as well. Okay, so doing the normal map. This is your blue and purple image that tells the program how to where the heights and low areas are of your fabric. So where it dips and where it has a little peak. How we get there, not by going to 3D, which is weird. You would think you would go to the 3D menu, but we go to filter, down to 3D, generate normal map. You're going to get this window and I just go right to texture map down here. So if you select on that drop down menu, select texture map, this is what it should look like. And I don't mess with anything. You can change these numbers right here, but normally they are just fine. And you don't want it to be inaccurate as far as what the what the height and the low parts are because it's taking the value from your image. So if your image starts with a really bright area, it's going to read that as a super high area. So I'm just going to hit OK and that's literally all you do for your normal map. And we need to save it, export it, same as PNG. And I'll say rib stretch normal. And then our last one is a displacement map. The displacement map is your grayscale image. So this one's super easy. Also, we just go to image mode grayscale. Yes, discard the color. And this is all we need. So I can save that as a PNG. Okay, and those are the three maps that we need. So let's go into Clo. All right, when you open Clo, this is the interface, right? So you always have this default fabric available to you when you start. Let's add an avatar, and I don't need a human shape. I just want a 3D shape, just something simple to drape the fabric over. This doesn't even have to be perfect, doesn't have to be in the center or grounded even. It's just going to be something that we set the fabric on. Okay, that's great. Now I'm going to create a simple pattern, just a little square that will ultimately drape over this. So we can watch this generate as we go to mess with the properties of your fabric, right? You have to have this selected. Both of your um, property editor and your object browser have to be open. They live over here, right? In the right hand side of your workspace. So object browser is going to house your fabric and the property editor is going to allow you to access all the properties of whatever is selected. So we have to have our fabric selected if we want to change those parameters. We can go ahead and name this, so I'm just going to say stretch for now. We also want to um, keep all of this the same. You want this to be repeat fabric mat. We don't want added shininess or anything. But here are our maps that we need to add now. So I could either, if I wanted, we could link our files that we just created by going in our library, opening that up pressing this plus icon, and then it will bring up a dialog box where you can navigate to the folder where you saved your files. And then they would be right in your library to then drag and drop to your fabric or to your um, maps over here. But I'm going to do a different way. So you can also 
click on this four square icon right here. And right beside texture is where I want to add my texture map to. So I'm going to click on that icon and I'm going to navigate to where I saved that, which was the desktop. And our texture is the full color right here. Like right here, I can see this happening, which means I would want to go in and fix how um, what's creating that. So that's not acceptable right there. But in any case, you're going to have to uh, do this on your own in whatever fabric you have. So it might not be the same case, but you're going to have to go back and forth and fix the issues. Same for normal map. Let's click that icon and it'll at first, if you saw all those purple images or files, it brings up the assets that are tied to your fabric library in Clo. but just navigate to where you saved the um, normal map and that's the purple and blue one. So right here. And so really quick, I want to show you. So if we don't have a normal map and we just have a texture map, I can increase the intensity of this and see how this popped up. We have a normal map now, but I want our legitimate one. And then displacement map, the gray one. Okay. But let's, um, even though this is not perfect, I would want to go in and fix this. Let's drape it. And if you know anything about um, the gizmo working in Clo, you can click on this target, that little target right there, and then it pretty much automatically places it when you hover over an object or an avatar. And I can press zero to get my underneath view of it, just to center that fabric a little bit. I can press two to get my front view. And then one last thing I want to do to make a better drape a, a better behavior. I want to change the um, also particle distance. So I'm going to bring that down to five so we have a smaller mesh. But what I was getting at is, oh, I need to have my fabric selected, right? My property, my physical property. So if I click this drop down menu, I can get pretty close to what I want by going to this nylon stress, nylon spandex right here. And what that's going to do is add all these specific um, properties to the behavior. Now these have been entered from legitimate testing, like actual equipment that tests the stretch and the toughness, um, all of these factors of a fabric. So I'm going to keep these first six as they are, but I'm going to change my bending bias right and left down to zero just to give it a little more um, bend. And then the other thing, and I keep these last three, so you have zeros from then on and the last three internal damping, damping is one, density is 17, friction is three. This is a, a pretty nice high quality rib stretch. So I'm going to change the thickness to 0.7 millimeters. So it's a little more hefty. And then the last, very last thing is, and we can sort of look at this once it's rendered, but the roughness, this is a pretty, it's not a shiny material. It has a little bit of shine, but for the most part, it's dull. And that's where your rough met properties or parameters come into play. So that's roughness and metalness and reflection is pretty much how shiny it is. But if I up the roughness, it will sort of counteract this reflection. So let's see what happens when it drapes. I can hit my space bar to simulate or this arrow. And I want to sort of consider, is that what my real world fabric looks like when I drape it over an object that is similar to this? Does it have these bends and cones 
when it drapes, when it falls or folds in and sort of collapses on itself. And it does look like that. So we have a pretty good representation of that fabric that I was showing you earlier. And we can get a better representation by going into our render window. We have to stop simulation to start this render. So that looks pretty good. Now, since I have this interactive render on, it will hopefully update each time I make a change. But while I have this fabric selected, I can mess with some of these properties of the fabric. So if I want the normal map to give me a little more information regarding how high and low these ribs are, I can up that. I can even um, change the amount in my under my displacement map. So I can go to 0.5 millimeters for a little more depth. So that looks pretty realistic. And I would want to render this out. So it's still thinking about all the noise that um, is happening. And I'm not sure if you're super familiar with this, but we can change that noise level. See all this sort of grittiness happening? Um, real quick, before I show you that, this um, texture map right here, if I click on this drop down from texture. The fabric doesn't have to stay orange, right? I can click desaturation and it's going to remove the color, but keep the, um, the value to represent the highs and lows of the surface roughness. And after you desaturate that, you can then apply another color to it. However, I don't necessarily find that it is as um, convincing or effective when you do it this way. So it's almost like you would want to recolor it in Photoshop um, for a more convincing image. But it's not too bad, right? It still looks pretty good. I'll turn my desaturation off. When you want to render this out, you're going to do two things. First, you go into while you're in the render window, I'm going to my image and choose the size of your image. Let's say I wanted this to be um, a perfect square, I could do 800 by 800. 300 is really high, especially if it's going to be an image for web. But I guess if you want to print, you would keep it up there. But I find that 150 is a pretty good even or middle ground. And then consider what you want your background, all of that. Name it. and choose where you want to save it. So by clicking this, you can choose where you want it. Mine's set to desktop already, which is fine. And the last thing to get a really crisp looking image, if you're working with a GPU, you can change it to GPU. I'm on a Mac, so I only have CPU as an option. But your noise threshold, I take mine down to 0.01. And that is pretty decent. If you're doing a really big image, you want to up your render time and then change your quality of light and material to very high, both 
go to very high. It's depending on your end use and what you need out of it, but these are the ways that you can uh, make a better um, render of your image. <clears throat> and once you have all that changed to what you need, you are going to stop render by clicking the stop button in your render menu and then you're going to hit final render and it's going to start working on your render and this could take five minutes 10 minutes depending on how much I've had some take 50 minutes for a single image um, but that was a really big image so I hope that helps um, remember that you likely will have a um, something that goes wrong at least the first time that you do the fabric image and just keep working on the details and reworking it and correcting it until you're happy with the repeat and how it looks in Clo. Remember in Clo is where you're going to see the discrepancies happen so make sure you're checking in there and working from that information. Alright, that's it.